told of one thing after another that's going to make these weapons more precise. A lot of the way that they are, are uh, using the cell phone is, uh, they were saying, okay, you know, uh, we will be tracking people's cell phone and we can be able to uh, know uh, who we're after by the cell phone, and then people just kept changing cell phones around with each other. Um, they say facial net recognition, uh, in fact, they say that they are uh, already able to do facial recognition, and you see all the mistakes they made. For example, uh, after President Obama said we were only going to use the drones when there was near certainty of zero civilian casualties, uh, then there was the bombing of a convoy that they said, oh, a convoy going, uh, a lot of cars going together in an area where Al-Qaeda is prevalent, that must be Al-Qaeda, and they hit them and that was a wedding party. Well, how is facial recognition going to tell you whether this was a wedding party or an Al-Qaeda convoy? So I think that we shouldn't be fooled by uh, more and more uh, ways they tell us that this technology is becoming more precise. Uh, I think we want to say that people should have a chance to surrender. Can't surrender to a drone. People ha should have a chance to a trial. People should have a chance to um, a judicial process. And this is something that people have been fighting for for 800 years now, since the time of the Magna Carta. And I think it's time that our country start respecting uh, these basic tenets of international law. And also, if I could mention, there are 400 new refugees every single day in Afghanistan, according to Amnesty International. So once one of these strikes hits a village, sometimes the whole village will pick up and run because they're afraid that the Taliban will then come and say, you must have given information, and that's why this drone hit here. And so people panic. And they run to overcrowded cities where they can't possibly be supported. And so you have these huge, burgeoning refugee camps. Anne and I have seen them, one of them right across from a big, huge United States military base. There are no jobs for the men, so they send the children out to work. 600,000 child laborers in Afghanistan right now. And all of these problems keep on multiplying. And again, the drone surveillance will never, ever, ever give us a hint or a clue about the realities in the countries where people are trapped and they can't escape. They have nowhere to turn and nowhere to hide. We're going to take one more.